Nudge is a behavioral psychology book which aims to improve decisions from everyday people's lives by introducing a small change, which is what we call a nudge, a small change that will create a huge difference. In this book, there are three different kinds of people. Econs, which are highly rational with no emotions, and studies all the new ones before making a decision. On the other hand, there are the humans, which are highly irrational, easily influenced by emotions, and often are forgetful. Human beings think they are econs. When making a decision, they think they are very rational, but often are not. They neglect all the nuance and evidence and sometimes go with the flow with each decisions. And finally, the third type of person, which is the choice architect. These are the designers who either make life easier or harder for us humans. For choice architects, a good rule of thumb is to assume that everything matters. But on the other hand, we can't design the perfect system. This is often addressed by creating within a scope and designing towards the well-being for us humans. So here are the five key takeaways of the book Nudge relating to user experience. The path of least resistance. Let us say you want to create a food application aimed to people that want to start a healthy diet. This would be an example of its landing page. On the first fold of the screen, they can see a healthy food option which are easy to prepare and the ingredients are often available in everybody's home. When first starting out, we must make it as easy as possible with not a lot of effort for them to start their fitness journey. The power of the default. Some of you might heard about the paradox of choice. The more the choices are, the harder it is for us to choose. By setting a default option, we can make the user narrow down their choices. A good example of this are subscriptions or software services. Rather than presenting customizable plans outright, it would be best to present them as bundles. The fewer, the better. Another examples are notifications for your financial services. If you have a mortgage to pay, a good choice architect would set the default option to send notifications each time the due date is near. Dynamic inconsistency. This can be a fancy term for what we call procrastination. We can say that I would be productive tomorrow, but we end up binge watching YouTube videos the whole day or play some video game. So how do choice architects design for this type of situation? One is creating an app that would lock your internet viewing of non-productive applications. It's like a child filter but for adults. In my own experience, one thing that often works is saying the time and the action. I will work on this paper about nudges in this afternoon, 1 p.m., until the third paragraph. It should be specific and say it to anyone who is willing to make you accountable for it or remind you on the day. After that, place all the materials in your line of sight and just make a mental pact that you would sit there for four hours, knowing that we are very inconsistent in our words and action. We should be more forgiving about our inconsistencies and focus more on getting back up rather than staying on the slump that we failed once. Framing Framing is a psychology term which means to take into consideration how to state a question because it would greatly affect the answers of the person on how or which way the question is stated. Let us use the fitness landing page as an example. One would read, get results in one month with our fitness plan. The other one would say, consistency is key to get results. It is more appealing for people who starts their fitness venture with a targetable date, rather than projecting that fitness would be such a chore to do. Or how about this design of a prospectus of a company? Our company earned 20% more last year compared to this one. Our company long-term debt is 20% higher than last year. The perception of long-term debt is more negative than stating that the earnings of the company is much more higher. If the company wants to att attract investors, they would want to focus more on the messaging that the company is profitable 
rather than the company is racking up debt. The herd mentality. Why do some elderly folks have Facebook, Twitter, or sometimes a TikTok account? Herd mentality kinda answers these types of questions. It blows my mind that I've experienced this personally from a family member who has no interest in social media, slowly inches her way into Facebook and now sporting 20 games of a Candy Crush clone and uses gifts and replies and chat to almost everyone she knows. The difficulty or the learning curve is sometimes neglected if the herd is u- using an application. The fear of missing out is sometimes a good enough reason to follow the herd. On the other hand, sometimes we follow the herd for the wrong reasons. For example, not speaking up if there are injustices inside your company. Often or not, we don't like to be the contrarian who has no group. Here you can see an experiment of people who are just standing up when the buzzer is rang. There is no purpose of this action whatsoever, but people are still doing it. Unconsciously, we want to belong with the norm. We don't want to stand out. So how can we relate this to user experience? This is prevalent in what we call UI patterns. UI patterns are often defined by material designs by Google or iOS nowadays. And some are from the branding of individual companies. Before, it was a free-for-all. But there are some design memes that stuck. Timelines and infinite scrolling was a novelty. Now, it became a norm because of social media. Popularity of a platform should be taken into consideration also. The top applications that are being used often set the tone in what kinds of patterns people would often use. It is kind of hard to break away if there is a design meme. Often, novel UI solutions sometimes need popularity boost for them to become relevant. So that's it guys, hope you enjoy my summary of the Nudge book.